Oreo, are you ready for your close-up? <gasps> are you ready for your close-up? I mean, guys, I could not. I mean, like, he's just sitting there. He says, someone play with me. I'm so bored. <gasps> We're going to play in a little bit, bud. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. It feels so good to be sitting in front of the camera, ready to chat with you guys. It feels like it's been a minute. Um, if you guys are new here, welcome. My name is Brittany and I'm excited to have you here. Today I'm especially excited because this video wasn't exactly in my planned content for the upcoming month, but I recently posted on my Instagram stories a before and after picture of my grocery shopping, like my fridge. So like my before picture of my fridge completely empty, like literally empty. <laughs> and then after my grocery haul. And I posed the question to you guys, like since COVID has hit, has your grocery shopping habits changed? Because mine personally have changed significantly. So prior to COVID, I was just going to the grocery store every week. It's always been what I've done. And then once COVID hit, my grocery shopping drastically changed because I was making an effort not to go to the grocery store that much. And somehow it just evolved to me only going to the grocery store around once a month. And so I posted on my Instagram stories, basically saying like, has anyone else changed their grocery shopping habits? Because now I only grocery shop once a month. And you guys were like, I got so many comments or dms asking me how i only go to the grocery sh store once a month and how do i manage that and my friend shelby actually dm me and she's like how like what do you do about fresh produce like everyone had all these questions and she actually said "Brittany, this would make a really good video to see how you do this so alas this video has been born so thank you shelby if you guys ever have videos you want to see or ideas, feel free to shoot them to me because I love it. And here we are, like we're going to do this. So today's video is how to grocery shop once a month. I'm really excited to talk about this with you guys. I think this is going to be a fun video. So let's get started. When COVID first hit, you know, like many people, myself, I try to stock up as much as possible on groceries. And for me, I was making a plan to make those groceries last as long as possible. Realistically, I think I knew like about a month was gonna be the max amount of time. It would probably be pretty hard to go past that, at least for me, but that was my goal. So I basically, over time, have been able to fine tune this system in which I can stretch my groceries for a month. And Adjusting it has been easier than I thought it would be. If you had told me a year ago that I was gonna do a grocery shop once a month, I probably would have laughed in your face because especially for me, I love fresh fruits and vegetables. And personally me, I try to eat pretty healthy and I'm not perfect, but I do really try to live a healthy lifestyle. And you might be thinking, Brittany, there's literally no way that I'm going to go a month without buying groceries and still be able to eat healthy. And I'm here to tell you it's possible. Trust me, I would have had the same reaction a year ago, but there is a way you can do it. And today I'm hoping that this video, I can share some insights because this might actually change your life. Think about how much time you waste going to the grocery store each week. It's a good chunk of time. Like pre-COVID, Brittany was going to the store pretty much every Saturday. I would wake up early. I would go. I'd probably be in the grocery store for at least an hour. The grocery store is about 20 minutes from my house. So just in that time frame, like driving to the grocery store, driving home, and being at the grocery store, waiting in long lines, being with crowds, not my ideal like start to the weekend, but that's what I did. So I was wasting about two hours of my time every week grocery shopping. But since then, like I've basically started doing grocery shopping once a month. And because of that, I am saving myself approximately six hours, six to eight hours of time each month because I'm only grocery shopping once a week. And not to mention in today's world, there are grocery delivery services like Instacart, Walmart pickup, lots of grocery stores are doing pickup right now. So you could potentially not even have to be in the store and just go pick up all your groceries for the month, save yourself a lot of time 
And here's the kicker, also a lot of money. One thing that I really didn't realize was gonna be so impactful about doing grocery shopping once a month is how much money you could save. So when you think about it, when you go into the grocery store each week, you have a grocery list of things you wanna buy. But like many humans, most times, at least for me, I would go into the grocery store and you're there. And so you're more likely to impulse buy things. So I would be in the grocery store, I had my list and I would think of something else like, oh, wouldn't it be nice this week if I made this? And I would pick it up. And then another thing I was notorious for doing is having an idea of what I was gonna make and then realizing I needed an extra ingredient that I didn't account for. And I didn't look at my pantry before I went home or before I went to the grocery store. And then I'm like, oh, I need a can of tomato sauce. I might have some at home, but I'm not 100% sure. So let me just grab another can. So when you're in the grocery store, it puts you in a situation in which you're just going to buy more. I mean, it just happens. And because of that, a lot of times what's on your list is not what you just end up buying and therefore you're spending more money. So when I started doing my grocery shopping once a month, one, it forces you to plan more. So you really have to think, what am I gonna be making for the month? What do I need? It forces you to do an audit of your pantry, make a list, plan everything out because you're not going to the store. There's less opportunities for you to go to the store. So you need to make sure you're getting everything you need and just that. In the month of January for 2021, I only spent $135 on groceries for the month, which honestly, is mind blowing to me because uh, you know, it's just myself and my husband, we're two people and we were spending so much money at the grocery store and at full disclosure, I'll give you numbers. We would spend anywhere from $400 a month to $700 a month, which is a lot. Like that is a lot. Granted, we don't eat out a lot, especially now. I mean, we pretty much do carry out maybe once a week and usually it's something inexpensive like Chick-fil-A or Chipotle, something like that. But that's still a ton of money is money on groceries and way more than we need to be spending. So for me, looking back at last month and seeing that I only spent $135, I was so proud of myself, but I also was like, you know what? If I hadn't made that switch to grocery shopping once a month, we would not be here right now because I have learned so much from changing to grocery shopping once a month and I've gained so much from it. Another reason why you should consider shopping once a month is because it forces you not to waste food. And I can't tell you how many times before 2020, we threw out food like we would just cook food we wouldn't finish it we would waste it and i think that when we were put in a situation where we had to make our food stretch we did it and we took for granted like such simple things in life that we take for granted food i mean food is an essential part of life we need it to fuel our bodies we need it to live we need it to be healthy and we would go like through the entire week cooking all these new meals and then we wouldn't finish the leftovers. It would get tossed at the end of the week. We would waste fresh produce because we would have produce but we would go to the store the next week and just buy more produce and we just weren't going through it fast enough and so much waste. And now like that we've changed our lifestyle in a way where you know we are having to really stretch our food, use it all up, we're doing it. And that makes me so happy because there is no better feeling than when you're eating the food in your fridge and it's not going to waste. Isn't that the worst when you know you're spending money on food and you're not eating it? So because of that, now that we are only grocery shopping once a month, it really has really shaped the way we cook and prepare food what we're using first, um, you know, what I'm using towards the end of the month, making sure that we are eating leftovers. Um, but yeah, it's just really changed the way we're eating and we're cooking and we're still able to eat healthy, which again, like I know, like you're probably thinking, okay, you're only growing, going grocery shopping once a month. You have to be eating a ton of processed food. I would think 
like if I were you, I would be thinking like freezer meals, TV dinner, like like chips, like not healthy food, but I promise you I'm eating healthy. I think the best way that I can do this for you guys is I'm gonna give you a fridge, pantry, and freezer tour. And we're gonna talk about what I'm cooking and hopefully it will give you some ideas and challenge you to rethink the way you're grocery shopping and maybe maybe grocery grocery shopping once a month could be for you. I don't know, just, just an idea. But I think that's what we're gonna do today. So I feel like I could sit here on the floor and talk to you guys forever about this, but I think we should just get into it. And yeah, I'm excited. Let's go tour my kitchen. Welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> All right, um, also, as usual, I have to give my disclaimer that if you hear any loud noises, Derek, my husband, is building something. Isn't he always? I mean, literally every video I'm like, disclaimer, my husband is building something, but he actually is. So, um, in latest news around our house, Derek has picked up woodworking because, you know, it's what he does. He's really good at this stuff and he loves it. So, I think he's building an end table downstairs and then also... We, well, no, I'm not doing anything. I'm not. But Derek is going to be gutting our upstairs bathroom soon. So he he's doing a lot right now. Hear this all? I wasn't kidding. Okay, so while Derek is doing that, pardon the noise. Hopefully you can hear me okay. We are going to start, I think. I think my plan is we're going to go into the fridge first. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk through what I have and then also why I bought it. Like I think what I'm gonna do is just share all the different things I bought, what I'm gonna use them for and my reasoning and as to which the order I am gonna use it in. Does that make sense? Let's just, let's just get into it and then I think it'll all work itself out. All right, so here's our fridge. There is a lot because we literally just did our grocery haul this week for the month and it works out perfectly because you guys are going to see pretty much everything that I bought. Um, all right, here we go. So let's start with produce. So I got a Caesar salad kit. Um, I'm going to make spaghetti and meatballs tomorrow. So we're going to have that with that. I also got some fresh romaine. I love salads. So when we do our grocery hauls, I buy all the fresh salad stuff. Let me just start taking some of this out because I'm gonna need to like get it out of here so you guys can see it. Okay. Um, so yeah, we got romaine so I can make salads. Baby carrots are like my favorite snack. I have them almost every afternoon with the holy guacamole cups. And then I also have some blueberries. And one tip for you guys for keeping produce fresh longer is to get these lock and lock containers. So these blueberries, I do not wash ahead of time. I put them right into the lock and lock after I've unpackaged them. That way they stay fresh longer because typically I have found when I wash blueberries ahead of time and put them in a container, they will get moldy faster. So I love blueberries for snacking. They're really good. They have lots of antioxidants. I love putting them on my oatmeal in the morning. So was glad to pick those up. And then also I have some cucumbers in this lock and lock. These are the little mini cucumbers. Again, I don't wash them ahead of time. I kind of patted them dry because there was a little bit of condensation when I bought them, stuck them in the lock and lock and they'll stay fresh pretty long. Cucumbers, I've had them last for up to two weeks when I when I put them in the lock and lock like this. So that is a really helpful tip for stretching your produce because I know that's probably your biggest concern is what am I gonna do without fresh produce? And I get it, I like fresh produce too. So I have all my fresh produce for the week. I also bought um, apples and that lemon is actually a couple weeks old. It's still hanging in there. Um, I think I'm going to use that for a recipe. I need the zest and a little bit of the juice for a pasta recipe I might make soon. And then I also have some bell peppers and some zucchinis and then I have some mushrooms. So when it comes to buying fruit, I would recommend buying fruit that is going to last a couple weeks. So for example, I have my blueberries. Those are probably gonna last about a week and a half. I'm gonna eat those first. Then I have my apples. Apples last a really, really long time. 
I literally just ate an apple that I bought before New Year's and it was still good. And today is like February 6th. So apples last a long time. So it's a great fruit to get to last like the entire month. And I will wait and eat these apples until probably like in a week or so. Like I'm gonna eat my other produce that's gonna go bad faster first. Then I will like reserve my apples for when I run out of produce. I also have some bananas over here. So again, these are gonna go pretty fast. So I've been actually already eating these. I'm gonna eat them this week. Recap on produce. Let's talk about this for a minute. So I just showed you all my produce. Um, I talked about the salads. I'm gonna be eating salads this week. That's gonna be my lunch. And then I showed you the fruit and my plan for how I'm gonna eat that like throughout the next couple of weeks. Backup fruit. So that's all fresh fruit, right? But I always have backup fruit and my backup fruit is in the freezer. This is what, when I was like COVID was starting and I started to think creatively, I bought frozen fruit. And honestly, like before that, I never really even thought to buy frozen fruit. I just typically was eating fresh fruit. But since that, I've been buying it. I love buying frozen blueberries. I love buying frozen strawberries, frozen cherries. I also buy frozen pineapple and mangoes. And I'll use the frozen fruit for smoothies but also if I were to run out of my fresh stuff, I can easily just like put a little bit of frozen fruit in a bowl, let it sit on the counter for a couple minutes and it'll defrost and I can eat it. And honestly, frozen fruit right out of the freezer is delicious. It's a really good snack. And also if you're craving like dessert, it's kind of like eating a bowl, to, bowl of ice cream. You know, sometimes you're just like craving something really cold. Frozen fruit is really good for that. Also, I also like to have like the dull fruit cups, like the mandarin oranges. Those you can keep in your pantry and pop in the fridge when you want them. And that's what I kind of like always have on hand just in case I start to run out of fruit. I have that as my backup fruit. Other things that I have in my fridge, I have yogurt. I love yogurt. I eat it. I use it in my smoothies. I eat it by itself. I eat it for breakfast some mornings. So I have a Chobani less sugar Greek yogurt vanilla that I'll use for smoothies and then raspberry for when I just want to eat it straight up. And then back there, I also have a little cup that I need to eat that's going to expire in a hot second. These are those uh, mandarin oranges I was talking about. Just a little, look at all these condiments. I don't know. Does anyone else like hoard condiments in their fridge? I kind of want to throw them out because they're just annoying. Okay, so these are the mandarin oranges. Actually, I kind of hate these. <laughs> Derek got them. I asked him to pick them up and he got the like no sugar added ones and they taste like straight up stevia. And I'm just not a fan of artificial sweeteners. But you know what? They do, they get the job done. Like if you are running low on produce, I really like the fruit cups. Um, and then some other fruits that last a really long time are citrus fruits, so clementines, oranges. I bought these organic oranges from Lidl. Again, it was like right before New Year's and they lasted for a month in the fridge, which is amazing. I keep them in the crisper drawers. So that's just another little tip. I love to buy sandwich meat and I'm really not picky about the brands. I got this um, Oscar Mayer Natural Turkey Breast yesterday and what I like to do with it is I will freeze half of it um honestly if I might open this tomorrow and just freeze it all like divide it up put it in the freezer and then when I'm ready for it it will be in the freezer and I can take it out and defrost as I need it because that will again stretch the lifespan of the turkey because if I open it now it's all gonna go bad I'm not gonna be able to stretch it for a full month also cheese we love cheese we have a bit of a problem let me show you our cheese drawer what's in here oh cream cheese again these lock and locks so convenient i have some cream cheese in here and they'll keep that fresh really long i always have shredded cheeses on hand and cheese lasts a really long time um honestly if you keep it in the right container it will last for a month again the lock and lock containers these, as soon as I open up a packet of cheese slices, I will put them in one of these containers and it will keep it fresh longer. And then I always like to have a variety. So I have this like provolone here. I have this sharp cheddar um, because again, like I always have sandwich meat on hand and 
this week like I'll be eating salads but then perhaps next week I will run out on my lettuce and stuff and I will move on to doing like a sandwich or a wrap and so I always like to have cheese on hand for that and then of course I also love to have like string cheese because that lasts for a really long time and that's a really nice high protein snack that I like to have in the afternoons. Again, like we have like an excessive amount of cheese right now. Like I have a problem. Um, also, I like to have the cheese blocks. Occasionally, I prefer to grate my cheese for certain recipes. So I always like to have one of those on hand. More dairy stuff. I have some heavy whipping cream. Derek is doing this in his coffee. Instead of just drinking black coffee again, he's just trying to eliminate sugar. So he's been doing a little bit of this in his coffee. Also, we love sour cream, so I have two containers of this because I never want to run out. And then I actually have some open spaghetti sauce back there I'm actually going to use tomorrow. And again, as we we're like talking about using up all your food, um, I have that spaghetti sauce and I was like, you know what? I have that spaghetti sauce. I need to use it. So tomorrow I'm going to make spaghetti meatballs in the crock pot. So again, just doing inventory of what you have is so important in helping you stretch your food longer also I always like to make sure I have like salad dressings on hand like any condiments you might need um, I've got pickles pickles have been like a new snack food of mine that I kind of am obsessed with again they're low calorie oh that's the fridge beeping at me because it's been open too long <laughs> okay so that's the fridge you know that's a lot of fresh stuff we talked about some of the stuff I put in the freezer Oh, another thing is milk. So I know some people go through milk really, really fast. And that can be a point of contention for people who do shop, like who feel like they can't shop every month. Um, we don't go through a ton of milk, honestly. Like I usually only buy the half gallon and that will last us for like a couple weeks. We'll usually go through it before it goes bad. And so I just try to like, enjoy the milk while I have it and so like I'll plan out like I like to do smoothies a, like a couple times a week so I'll use that like the first two weeks that I have the milk you can freeze milk I've never done it before but that is something just like to keep in mind you can experiment with if that's a, like going to be a problem for you so just just do some research on that that might be an option so now we need to dive into the freezer and the freezer is a very very important part of stretching your groceries because there's a lot of veggies and fruits like i mentioned the fruits there's a lot of veggies you can get that you can freeze that way you're not like loading up on all these fresh veggies and they're not going to last and you're not going to go through them so let's take a look at the freezer Welcome to my freezer. I'm getting loopy. It's getting late in the day and I need to wrap this video up. So pardon me, I'm getting a little crazy. Okay, so again, people think freezer and they think really bad for you processed foods, but there's a lot of foods you can get and store in your freezer that are actually really good for you. And again, we have the frozen fruit and the frozen veggies. These are the mangoes I was talking about, the pineapple down there from Trader Joe's I use for my smoothies. I've got fr frozen green beans. I actually really love frozen green beans. And honestly, in my opinion, a lot of frozen veggies taste just as good as fresh veggies when you cook them for dinners and lunches. And usually they're easy to prepare, easier to prepare. You can buy the steam fresh bags where you literally just pop the bag in the microwave there's no mess, it's so easy, it's so fast, and they're really healthy for you. And then you can see I have a giant bag of cauliflower down there I like to use for various casseroles and just like on the side for dinners. Um, I also have a variety of frozen vegetables in here. I have this cauliflower risotto. We do a lot of cauliflower rice nowadays now that we're just trying to eat healthier and Derek's been doing keto. I've got some fire roasted corn. This is great just like on the side for taco nights or in soups and chili. So I love having that on hand. I have like an excessive amount of corn right now. So there's some white corn down there. And then I also have some fajita vegetables. Again, peppers and onions, like normally something you might buy fresh, but you can get it frozen and it's perfect for any Mexican inspired dishes or if you wanna have fajita night. I have some green peas right, oh wait, sorry, these are um, chopped onions, which again, 
Onions are something you might be used to buying fresh and getting them frozen is another good option. You can use again for soups, chilies, spaghetti sauce, anything like that. And then I also have some green peas down there. So meat is something that I've been freezing for years, honestly. I grew up with my mom freezing meat and it's just a really good way to ensure that upon getting your meat, you freeze it and you're guaranteeing that it's gonna stay fresher longer. Meat is something that can spoil very, very quickly in the fridge. And I learned actually that meat is stored at a, a colder temperature in grocery stores than it does in your, your home fridge. So you're really not even supposed to keep chicken in your fridge longer than like a day. Like pretty much if you buy chicken on Monday, you should be cooking it on Tuesday. That's actually what the Purdue Chicken website says. So I always pretty much, as soon as I get meat, if I'm not gonna cook it that day or the next, it goes right in the freezer. And I will divide up our meat. So I have some um, stir fry meat here that I would make all at once. So I left it in that package. And I also have some chicken breasts down here that came in a larger package and I divided them up into freezer Ziploc bags and dated them. So that way, when we're ready to cook chicken, I can just take out one pack, defrost it in the fridge, and then we'll have the perfect amount for the both of us. I also have some of this Cajun sausage that's been in my freezer for quite some time now. So as I was meal planning for this month, I actually was like, okay, I need to use this Cajun sausage. So I'm gonna make some red beans and rice in a slow cooker with it. So again, just being cognizant of what you have in your freezer and planning around the ingredients you already have. So for me, I love just sticking it in the freezer. I think that, again, is a really easy way to have stuff on hand and be able to stretch your protein throughout the month. So I walked downstairs to show you guys our chest freezer, and as you can probably see outside, the sun is already setting, so the lighting in our basement is not great after the sun sets, so I, I couldn't really show you the chest freezer. It's just too dark and it basically, it just has more meat in it. It has like a turkey breast that we froze from around the holidays. Um, we bought it up when they were on sale, stuck it in the freezer. We actually just smoked one of those turkey breasts in the smoker last night and it was really, really good. Um, I have some ground turkey in the freezer. I have some chicken thighs in the freezer, lots of more frozen vegetables, broccoli, lots of cauliflower rice. I also have a couple Trader Joe's just quick things, like quick sides from there that are really, really good to keep in your freezer. Just if you're in a pinch, their sides are relatively healthy and made with pretty clean ingredients. So I love having their sides on hand. They're just so easy. And especially as you get towards like the end of your month and you may be running out of, like if you have your recipes planned and you've gone through a bunch of them and then at the end of the month you're like, I'm running out of stuff. If you have the Trader Joe's stuff on hand, it's really nice and convenient and it's a good way to like, you can just cook a chicken breast and then you'll have like your Trader Joe's side on hand. Other thing that people might buy on a weekly basis is bread. And personally, we've never ever been a family that goes through an entire loaf of bread. Like we're only two people. Honestly, I try to limit my carb intake in general. So when I do buy bread, I stick it in the freezer. So I have this Everything Tuscan bread from Trader Joe's that I'm actually almost out of. I'm gonna have to probably go to Trader Joe's next month. I also have these wraps that I use for like my sandwiches in here. And then you see I have some um, raviolis frozen there again from Trader Joe's. Just easy stuff to have. And then I also have these um, French rolls. So if I ever make like soup or chili and we're like craving a roll, we have these frozen ones here that are actually very delicious. This brand of rolls, this literally tastes like better than Panera bread baguettes. I don't know how like a frozen roll can taste that good, but they're really good. Okay, I think we're gonna go into the pantry next. I'm a little afraid to show you guys and I'm a little embarrassed because it's pretty disorganized to be honest. I have a system, like I know where stuff is, but when I open this, you're gonna be like, that's a lot, like it's crazy, and I know. I feel like that's, that would be a really good project for me to do soon is to organize my pantry, but I'm just warning you guys so you can brace yourself. On the top shelf is where I store, like we have our coffee up there. I don't drink coffee, but Derek does. 
He's been really into like cold brew coffee recently and I got him a cold brew coffee pitcher for his birthday so he's been making that. Actually this, I'm getting like really off track here but these ones he picked up when we went to Disney in January and that candy cane lane one actually tastes very good and I don't even like coffee. And then the sinful delight one is really sweet smelling too and he really likes those. Again, like stuff is gonna fall on top of me. Okay. Um, I'm a big tea drinker, so I have a lot of tea. Actually, that's something that I like almost always impulse buy when I'm in the grocery store. Like when I was there yesterday, I bought this uh Harvey, is it Harn Harney and Sons Fine Tea, Peppermint Herbal Tea. I actually did buy this on purpose though, because we're almost out of peppermint tea. One thing that I, I really recommend having on hand is like rice or quinoa. And so I have quinoa here and I love, um, when I start running on my fresh stuff, one of my backup lunches is I'll make quinoa in the rice cooker, which is super easy. And then I will take a can of like beans, for example. So I have these pintos here. I also have black beans and I will drain them put them over top of the quinoa and then maybe take some like frozen corn that I'll cook or some frozen veggies, cook those, throw them in the quinoa bowls. And then I have a nice little like vegetarian quinoa bowl and it's healthy and fresh and I, it keeps in the fridge really well. So I can prep like four of them, stick them in the fridge for the week and I have lunches and all I have to do is like take them out of the fridge microwave them. Sometimes I'll make them like Mexican style with like fajita peppers, a little bit of cheese, salsa, really healthy, really good. Quinoa is so much better for you than rice. So that's something I always have on hand. Again, I also have white rice, which, you know, sometimes we do like make um, stir fry or something and we'll like white rice. So I always have that on hand. These are really good. I really love these brown rice with quinoa packets. Again, it is processed, but it's just, if you're in a pinch and you really need a fast dinner, these are really good and you literally microwave them for two minutes. So it's, it's so convenient. Um, what else? I have granola here that occasionally I will eat on yogurt. And then I also have, oh my gosh, I've been craving grits so bad. All my family's from the South, FYI. So we relocated to Maryland when I was younger for my dad's work and we've just been here for a really long time. But pretty much no one I know like up here likes grits. I love grits and I remember, I don't make them that often, but recently I was like, dang, I really want some grits. And I did find some in my pantry, but they were way expired. They were from like 2018 and I was like, okay, these probably are not good. I need to throw them out. But I got some new grits and I'm excited. Maybe I'll make some tomorrow. I also have rolled oats, which I never really made my own oatmeal just on the stove top. But recently one of my beach body recipes, um, called for like quick oats to make like oatmeal on the stove. And ever since then I've been making it on the weekends and meal prepping it for breakfasts and one rolled oats are super inexpensive. And honestly, it's really easy. It's really easy to make it on the stove top and you can mix in fruit like apples if i have apples that are starting to turn and go bad i will throw them in oatmeal on the stove and it cooks really good and it adds a little bit of sweetness without just adding straight up sugar because that's something again i'm trying to avoid is just like throwing sugar into oatmeal so that's a really nice healthy option and then of course i also do buy um like these just the instant oatmeal packets again just for mornings when i'm really rushed and don't have a ton of time if I haven't had time to like meal prep oatmeal, I can just pull out a packet as I want it. These I actually bought yesterday. These are whole grain English muffins. This is a breakfast item. I usually will have once or twice a week. I'm going to put these in the freezer actually tonight. Um, so put them in a Ziploc bag, put them in the freezer because they will last for a couple months. I'll probably go through them honestly within a month. Um, but ow, <laughs> I need to deal with those. Also tortillas, really good to have on hand for enchiladas, tacos, fajitas, they will last. These ones are really are usually good for a couple weeks and tortillas last for a long time. You can also put them in the fridge, which will make them last longer. Also, things to have that are um, shelf stable, uh, pumpkin seeds. I am allergic to peanuts and I don't buy tree nuts because a lot of times they're manufactured in the same facility. 
but I love these pumpkin seeds. Really excited because I actually haven't been able to buy these in a while because I haven't been to the grocery store in person in so long and I can only find these at Giant. So this is actually a peanut free, allergen free product, which is awesome. So I have the regular sea salt, I have the somewhat spicy, and then I have these cinnamon sugar ones. Oh my gosh, guys. Forget the granola in my pantry. This is a much healthier option than that granola and sprinkle a little bit of these pumpkin seeds on top of yogurt and so good. Like it is so, it's like a nice little crunch on top of a fruity yogurt. It's delicious. So, oh my gosh, this is getting bad. Hold on. Uh, sun butter <laughs> that just fell out. This one's almost empty. I bought a new jar. Again, peanut allergy, can't eat peanut butter, but I really like this on those multi-grain English muffins and a lot of my beach body recipes call for some butter, or not some butter, but like peanut butter or like almond butter to be mixed in them. So I use that as a substitute. Another thing you might want to think about as you're grocery shopping and if you are going to try to grocery shop for a month's worth of food is really think about are there some standard family recipes you make every month? Like... For example, like my family, we always had like tacos or some type of Mexican dish like pretty much once a week or we would always have like spaghetti once a month or a pot roast. I'm really into soups right now. So one thing I always like to have on hand is like types of broth. If you do, keep that in mind. When you're planning your meals for the month, make sure you have pantry shelf stable ingredients like broths and canned goods and beans and maybe some canned vegetables. That stuff is going to stay good for a long time. Tomato sauce. I always have that kind of stuff on hand and I can show you a quick little tour of all that stuff, but that is going to be so helpful if you have those ingredients on hand and make sure like you're accounting that into your meal planning. Have those ingredients available so that if you get towards the end, like you have some new recipes you're gonna try. Make sure you have some standard recipes that you enjoy, like on hand that you know the recipes, they're not complicated and you can easily make. I have chicken broth, I have a vegetable broth there, beef broth. I have marinara sauces, again, for Italian food. I have pasta back here. I have some chickpea pasta. Banza is a really good pasta and high in protein. I have some whole wheat penne pasta here. A lot of my beach body recipes call for this. Actually really good. I've not really been a, a whole wheat pasta kind of girl until this year and I'm really liking it. And then I just have some standard spaghetti back there. Um, these are, again, I have a can of beef broth because sometimes my recipes will just call for like one can and it's nice to have the smaller portion size so I'm not opening a canister. And then I also like to have soups on hand. So these are two types of soup that I use in various recipes. The cream of chicken, like certain casseroles call for it. They're super easy. I also have a crock pot recipe. I think I've mentioned in one of my vlogs, but it's basically like chicken breast, cream of chicken, and then two brown gravy packets, and that's it. And you cook it and it makes like chicken and gravy in the crock pot. And you can start it over mashed potatoes, super simple, just easy. French onion soup, can of beef broth with a pot roast, and cook it, and then you have a delicious like French onion pot roast, which you can eat on sub rolls, you can eat it over potatoes, um, but yeah, just like things like that I like to have on hand. Beans, I always have beans in here for like my quinoa bowls, for soups, I have some canned green beans back there. I'm not a huge fan of canned vegetables, it's funny, I grew up on them, but now I'm more into frozen vegetables. I think they taste fresher and taste more like the real thing. Also, always have tomato sauces on hand, diced tomatoes, rotels, that kind of stuff for various recipes. It's just stuff that I go through on a regular basis. And then back here, I have various sauces, like Derek goes through so much sriracha, also mustard. I've never like gone through as much condiments as I have since I've been with this kid. Um, we got some Italian dressing nap back there. I think I have some enchilada sauce back there from Trader Joe's. Again, just shelf stable stuff. When you're starting to run out of your fresh snacks, so like carrots and stuff like that, I like to have like healthier shelf stable 
snacks on hand. So I love these. What is that? Oh, it's my dishwasher. <laughs> so many beefy noises. I love these bare apple chips and they're really healthy and they taste really good. And honestly, I feel like kids would love these too. I actually need to get more of them. I don't have that many left. And then also another snack um, that I like are these wisps. So I have cheddar cheese and then the Parmesan cheese crisps. So again, high in protein. They last for a long time and they're really good. Okay, so I think I pretty much covered like pantry, freezer, fridge. So again, like pretty much my system is work through all your fresh stuff in the first two weeks, plan for me, it's like planning my lunches around having that fresh produce, our dinners, and then going into my pantry for the last two weeks, again with lunches, doing like rice bowls or quinoa bowls, that banza pasta, the chickpea pasta, like having marinara sauce on hand. I can easily cook some vegetables up, frozen vegetables, mix it with marinara sauce, and then I can meal prep that pasta for lunches. Again, like having the cheeses, like a little bit of mozzarella on top, you have a really good, satisfying, hearty lunch that's pretty healthy. And then one, like plan your meals out. Like if you're trying new recipes, like again, make sure you're going to the store, you have all the ingredients you need on hand. And then I would work through those recipes maybe like in the first week or so. Like sometimes I find that the, the new recipes I am finding, a lot of them are like lots of fresh ingredients. So just planning accordingly, having your backup recipes, your standard recipes, make sure you have those ingredients on hand. They just come in so handy when you're in a pinch and you need something that you know the family's gonna like, is gonna be easy and it's gonna be good. Another note is leftovers have become key for us. Like in the past, we've not really been super big into leftovers but we've kind of learned to love them this last year so again that helps us stretch our food so sometimes for lunches we'll eat leftovers from dinner then from the night before or again we'll just like skip cooking dinner one night and eat leftovers we do do hello fresh occasionally although i haven't done it since december so we've still been pretty much like cooking normally i guess you would say and making our groceries stretch so there are some months where we do get like one week of HelloFresh. So that will help us stretch our food a little bit. So that's just something to note. I know in my intro, I was talking about how last month we only spent $135, which that was a really good month. And I just want to note that there are months where I am probably going to hit like two stores like in one month. For example, Trader Joe's. So I go to Trader Joe's really like once a quarter because Trader Joe's isn't close to where I live. It's like 30 minutes away. So you saw I have some Trader Joe's stuff. All that stuff is from December and it's February. So I usually go there and I do a really, really big shop and then I don't go there for a couple months. Same with like wholesale clubs. Like we have a BJ's membership. I actually can't even remember the last time I went there. It's been a couple months, but occasionally I will go and I'll stock up on like toilet paper and paper towel some canned stuff, meat, that type of thing. So there are months where I'm not spending like solely $135. You know, there are months where I'm sp probably still going to spend, uh, Trader Joe's, it's usually around like 200, maybe even a little more than that. BJ's can get expensive. So there are going to be months where we are spending like close to $400. But again, usually those times we're stocking up on stuff that is going to last us a couple months. I got sidetracked, but you know, with stores like Trader Joe's and BJ's, I can't get everything I need from those stores. Trader Joe's, their meat is very expensive. So when it comes to like standard chicken and ground beef and stuff, I prefer to get it from like a wholesale club or Lidl or Walmart or something like that. So that's where I was going with that. Basically there are months where I can't just do like one grocery shop because if I am going to Trader Joe's to stock up on stuff. That's like, I go there more for like frozen stuff, specialty items that I will stick in my freezer and will last for a couple of months. One other point I wanted to make is have some like stuff on hand for like easy lunches if you do start to run low on food. So I always like to have like a frozen pizza on hand, which again, I know it's not super healthy, but like I get the Trader Joe's flatbreads like the margarita one, which isn't terrible, stuff like that, or like canned soup is really nice to have on hand because when we got back from vacation, 
let me tell you, we were like real low on food and I was really getting creative. Like I had a Trader Joe's like frozen rice bowl, I think, that I had one day because I had like a crazy day of work meetings and just didn't have time to prepare something. Then we had like, again, we had sandwich meat on hand that came in clutch because we were like running out of stuff. And then also like, I like the Progresso like vegetable soups and they're not terrible for you and they taste pretty good. So those are nice to have on hand. Okay, I think we should wrap this video up. I know this is a lot and like, as you can see, it's dark outside. I started this video like in the afternoon and it has progressed into the evening, but it was really fun. And I hope this was helpful for you guys and answered some of the questions you might've had for the individuals who reached out to me in my DMs. This is kind of my system and it, continues to evolve as I learn new recipes and experiment with new ingredients. But this is kind of what I'm working with right now. It's been working out really well for us. I love having the extra time and not having to go to the grocery store every week. I feel better about it because I am still trying to like stay home as much as possible and just avoid public situations like that. But it's saving us money. It's working out for us. I think it could work for you guys too. And if you did have concerns and were wondering how this works, maybe I've provided some insights that could be helpful for you. I'm challenging you guys, try it for one month and see how it goes. And maybe even if you can't make it a full month, just say, okay, I'm gonna give this a try. I'm gonna see how long I can go without going to the grocery store. But you have to come up with a plan. You need to like sit down, you need to look at your recipe book. You need to audit your pantry, take a look at your pantry, see what ingredients you have. And that again, like cooking out of your pantry is going to save you so much money. You're going to use up all your food. It's going to be great. And also just when you're planning, don't make it out to be harder than it needs to be. Like, don't go into it saying like, I need seven different recipes for like each week. No, like you don't need that many recipes. Pick a couple because the reality is we're all busy and especially if you have kids that's like a whole nother ball game and just cook larger quantities have leftovers that way you're not having to cook every night and you don't need to try new recipes every week if you again if you have recipes that work for your family that you love just make sure you have those ingredients on hand substitute frozen vegetables where you can substitute frozen fruit where you can have those healthy options that are shelf stable like nuts and seeds and all that kind of stuff. And it's gonna change your life. It is so, so helpful. And I would love, mom, I know you're watching this video. I would love, I'm challenging you to do it. Can you do it? That would make me so happy because my mom goes to the grocery store every week and I feel like you guys could totally do this. For those of you who are new and stumbled upon this video, thank you so much for watching. And for the people who have been following me for a while, thank you guys so much. I love you guys. Thank you for the recommendation for this video. It was so much fun to film. Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already for more lifestyle, beauty, and travel videos. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.